So, what's going on, everybody? Um, I wanted to kind of talk a foray of NBA topics. Um, so, and this is via Real GM. And we're going to just talk a little bit, or should I say for a little while, not too long. I, I won't keep you for too long today um, on this particular video, but I, you know, right here on RC Talks, NBA and WNBA, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys. Got a few topics, a few thoughts, a few opinions. So kind of wanted to talk about, start for starters, Zion and Ja Morant's, what should I say, Zion Williamson and Ja Morant's murky crossroads. So it's all, I say it's all about how you look at it. Going for the future for Zion Williamson and Ja Morant, it can be whatever they want it to be. It truly can. If Zion Williamson wants to come in, fit and shape, focus, no matter what team he's on, the future is in his hands. If he can just focus, as I said, come in fit and shape, ready to play, everything else that he got going on, fix as you can. All the off-court circus hoopla, fix it as you can. And the same pertains to John Morant. John Morant, but in his case, he also has to work on accountability and culpability. You have to accept what is. You have to embrace what punishment was handed down. Go about it in a constructive manner of saving your career. Yes, saving, because right now, nobody truly believes in Ja in terms of feeling like he won't, that he will, feeling that he will repeat the same mistake again. And so if he does repeat the same mistake, punishment should be so severe. It should just be so severe. I'll leave it at that. But he has to just accept the reality of the situation, take accountability. If he must change friends, he must. If he must limit his social media or toss away his phone, when you got that much money, I'm sure you can find something else to do outside of just being on Twitter and, and, and IG all day and posting videos and lives. You you know, it's not worth it. Anybody around the world would tell John Morant what he's doing, what he's affiliating himself with, what he's portraying himself as is simply not worth it. You've been blessed with with tools and skills to pay so many bills. And you just don't want to mess it up. Because you got a gift from God and you truly need to go out and play because that's what you do best. And also, you don't need to be in those streets because if the streets could be where you were, Ja, they would be. They would easily swamp that basketball court with your skill sets for the streets in a heartbeat. So you must, being in that position, do the same. So I'm wondering what your guys' takes out there are on Zion and Ja because they both seem to be headed in the wrong directions. A fresh start for, for Zion, that might work if he can't get can't get it going with the Pelicans this season if he's missing games. But I don't know if a fresh uh, fresh team would help John Morant. He kind of needs to look inward and just ask himself, he's worked so hard to get to this level. Does he really want to blow it all now? And the answer should be no. That's the only acceptable, rational answer. You got people out here who do anything to have his skill set, to jump like he can jump, to ball like he can ball, to make the money that he can make, and he's throwing it away. It just doesn't make sense. So Zion and Ja, I know 
around the world, people make fun of you guys. And I think at some point, a lot of us always have something to say about, you know, public figures. But I'm wishing the best for each of you guys and that this can be nothing more than a bump in the road for you both. So just go out there and in, in John's case, learn from the suspension, take it and come back better than ever. For Zion, get out there and prove to us that you are what we know you can be whenever you do step on that floor, which is a ball of ball of superstar. So for my next, next subject, we're going to move along to the second sub second subject topic I wanted to talk about. Um, Vegas group increases budget to $10 billion for NBA ready arena project. So they're turning up in Vegas. Um, my Las Vegas Aces are already a dominant ball club with one championship under their belt. Shout out Las Vegas Golden Knights. They won the championship. Although I'm an Aces fan. I'm not a Golden Knights fan, but still. So we see success happen in Las Vegas, though, right? Big success is happening in Las Vegas. And Vegas wants an NBA franchise now more than ever. And I think that it's going to happen. But I just think the excitement, the rush, the need to have a team in Las Vegas is very high. Um, LeBron James is very interested himself in purchasing a team in Las Vegas. And they already bring in so much money in Vegas. Hotels, gaming, casino. Man, it's already, it's easily a money pot. And the hope in my eyes is that they will build a project, arena project, that will look so nice and so immaculate, so wonderfully um, created the arena that is that it will instantaneously have an NBA team wanting to play there. But I think a, a team is going to Vegas no matter what. I think even if they had to play in somebody's garage, you're going to see a team in Vegas and it's going to happen within the next one to three years because expansion is expected. And I, I feel like there's definitely going to be a team in Vegas. So you're just going to see what the arena looks like. I think it will be very exciting to have a team there. Um, and so much looking forward to that, you know, and it seems they're willing to spend, they're willing to put together whatever kind of money they have to, to get a team there and, and put that arena together and hopefully a team will follow, follow or, or vice versa. So the next subject I want to talk to you guys about is going to be a quick one. Gary, Gary Trent Jr. He opted into his $18.5 million deal with the uh, Toronto Raptors. So the Toronto Raptors, they're a young team. I think they are um, indeed rebuilding, but they got a lot of young pieces on their team. Um, they got some, some veterans on their team. Maybe they moving out veterans. But Gary Trent Jr., I think he knows um, to just get his money. He's a really valuable player, and he could really help out a team. But he definitely um, opted in. And, you know, I think this will give him an opportunity to showcase um, his skill sets even more. Uh, his game is similar to his dad's, but I, I think he did the right thing. Um, he's still a fairly fairly young guy. Um, can get his bag. Hopefully, Toronto um, led by like Scotty Barnes. They can um, they can get something going. I know they got a lot of players on their team looking to be moved. Um, the, the organization is going to have to figure it out at some point which way they want to go. Um, they've been up and down ever since. Uh, uh, really, they've been up and down. And, and not really totally up ever since, you know, Kyrie. I mean, not Kyrie, Kawhi left. So when Kawhi left, you know, they kind of been not the same Raptors team that we know of because, of course, Lowry is gone and DeRozan is gone. So this is a team trying to establish a new identity. And also they got a new coach as well. So it's going to take them some time. Um, then you got the Memphis Grizzlies. 
Um, they know now that Ja Rule will... Um, ja Rule, really? Yeah, I guess he's been acting like Ja, but hey, the Memphis Grizzlies are evaluating the trade market for Tyus Jones. I don't know. I think they should keep Tyus Jones. They're not going to have John Moran for 25 games, but I think they're looking to move up in the draft, perhaps. Um, so maybe they might package Tyus Jones in a pick to move up in the draft. Maybe they got their eyes on a young player. Maybe the Grizzlies uh, might be trying to get, um, uh, what's his name? Kaysen Wallace out of Kentucky. Um, an agile defensive man, the guard. Maybe they could be trying to get their hands on him. Um, perhaps they, you know, they see somebody else out there that they're willing to trade for. That's a guard. Um, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with Tyus Jones. Um, he's held down the fort before, but I guess if they're evalu- evaluating him for for trade offers, perhaps he's just looking to uh, find a starting point guard role, and maybe Memphis doesn't want to um, allow Tyus to be the starter while he's gone. Um, we'll just have to see. There's a lot of teams that could definitely use Tyus Jones, the Clippers, um, potentially even like I feel Milwaukee could use him. So we'll see. Um, next subject. Okay. Portland Trailblazers, they're trying to trade for Bam out of bio. And I just, I don't see how they can get that done guys. I don't, I don't really know how, how they could, how could you trade for, how in the world could the Portland Trailblazers trade for Bam? I don't think they have enough enough to get him. And why would Miami let Bam go? Is he still in his prime? I don't it doesn't really make sense. I know you want to improve the team from from Portland's aspect, but what are you gonna give up? You're gonna give up the third round pick? I heard they were keeping that. Um, yeah, it's, it's just weird. I don't, I don't really get the gist of it. Are you going to try to send back, uh, Nurkic? Are you going to come off of Shade and Sharp? Are you going to give them Anthony Simons? And that takes scoring away from Portland. I don't know. I, I, I just don't see that one getting done. And then we'll jump quickly. We got like two more. Um, Damian Lillard remains unwavering on this approach to one of the Blazers to add more veterans. Yeah, I mean, you have to trade some of your young picks and pieces. Portland has to make a decision on which way they want to go fast. I mean, Chauncey Billups doesn't deserve this. He deserves better as a head coach. He's one of my favorite coaches and a, and a very truly underrated legend um, in the NBA. So you, you just have to make a decision. If they want to go veterans – well, they better be veterans that are talented enough to help Damian Lillard and his trailblazers climb the um, Western Conference standings because what good is it getting veterans if they're not as talented as they need to be? Because you already got Jeremy Grant, but I looked at the roster earlier, and this is a fairly young team, um, and I think only I think Damian Lillard is the only guy in his 30s. So, yeah. They might just want to come down from that and, and um, just accept the trade, you know. I think so. But this is probably going to be his last year, so they're going to try to get it done. We'll have to see. And the last topic I wanted to discuss was the Bulls still value Zach Levine highly as they gauge the trade market. So the Bulls trying to tell us they got one foot in, one out. One foot in, one foot out. What else is new? They don't want to do a full rebuild because – Seems like they've been doing that since Derrick Rose, you know, injury after injury. Jimmy Butler was doing just enough for the Bulls at the time to keep them kind of like floating and, and, and play off the tension. Then you get Zach Levine um, in a monster trade with Minnesota. And, you know, Zach Levine's a, a really great scorer, but I just don't know what else he provides. And when, but when he's healthy, he can definitely contribute offensively. Um, I think DeMar, Rose, Dar, De, DeMar DeRozan needs to leave and, and find a team that can help him win it all, you know, as he ages because he's still got a lot left to give. But focusing on Zach Levine real quick, um, if you're going to entertain the, the trade market for Zach, 
you got to go all in. You have to. Um, I think you really have to go all in with Zach Levine. You can't. I mean, what if he gets whiff of them trying to trade him and, you know, and he doesn't, you know, either perform up to par or, you know, he feels slighted. Then what? So I think you, if you're going to trade Zach, you definitely have to go, as I say, all in. Um, I do think, interestingly enough, he is one of the best shooting guards left out there that can be had in a trade since Bradley Bill is gone. And don't ask me because I feel like Bradley Bill is a two guard. Who in the heck is going to play point guard for Phoenix then? Because Devin Booker is a two guard. So I, I don't know what they're doing. I guess they're going to maybe try to make Bill play point. It's the only thing I could think of. But Zach can definitely go to a few teams. He could definitely help. He can help Milwaukee, of course. He can help um, the Lakers, of course. Um, he, who else could Zach Levine help? Um, drop it in the comment section. Let me know. Um, there's a lot of – he could probably go to Brooklyn and help Mikael Bridges. Um, he could definitely – help Joel and B like big time, but I don't think they have enough to give up to get Zach Levine unless uh, Philadelphia wanted to give the Bulls Tyrese Maxey picks um, DeAndre Melton maybe another name or two like Jaden Springer and I was, as I said like some pick swamps they, they're going to have to give up something but Levine can definitely help some teams out there. So those are my topics um, I wanted to, that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, I hope you guys, um, you know, enjoy some of the topics. Maybe you guys want to comment on some of them. Let me know what you would do. Um, as always, it's, it's great to talk basketball. It's great to talk basketball news. It's great to discuss the rumors. We got the draft coming up soon. So, you know, for for you for those of you out there rocking with my channel, I appreciate you a lot. Um, each and every last one of you guys for taking the time out to watch and listen. So with that being said, like, share, subscribe. I'm going to catch y'all on the next video. Peace.